Hey everyone, so tonight is feeding night for some of my snakes. Uh, so I thought I would just go over how I feed my snakes frozen thawed. Um, so if you want to just watch a feeding video, uh, stick around. And if you want to know how to thaw out frozen rodents and feed them to your snake, then also stick around because I'm going to show you. <laughs> Okay, so first we gotta get our rodents from the freezer. And I actually use these cup things to thaw them out in. So let's see if I can do this with one hand. I might have to set a tripod up. Hold on. Okay, so I've got some rat pups here. Uh, they're a little bit small actually for rat pups, but. Uh, I'm going to be feeding them to Tux and my ball python, his name is Nugget. I haven't had him in a video before, so maybe you'll get to catch a glimpse. Um, so just what I'm doing here is I have these, which I'm going to fill up with uh, warm water. And I don't like to um, just put the rats straight into the water because then they get really wet and it's possible that substrate can actually stick to them and the snake can ingest some. Um, so I actually put them in bags, and if you live in Ontario, this is my life hack because these are milk bags, so they're perfectly waterproof. Okay, so I've got the rats in the warm water now. Um, I have to kind of weigh them down with spoons because the bags do actually make them float, unfortunately. Now, this is pretty much the only method you're going to want to use to defrost your frozen rodent. Um, you definitely don't want to stick it in the microwave. Um, it's going to explode. Even like taking your rodent out and putting it in the fridge overnight still really isn't ideal because any time that that rodent spends not frozen, it does just start to accumulate a little bit more bacteria. Um, and you know, the longer that it's been dead, even if it is refrigerated, the less it smells like a live rodent. So it's kind of harder to convince your snake potentially, especially if they are a picky or eater, um, that it actually is a live prey item and they should attack and eat it. Um, so this is really the best way, it's the closest it could possibly be to still being alive, basically. And this way you also make sure you don't like overcook the rodent, basically. With this warm water technique, you can actually defrost your rodent and then keep warming it up until it gets to about like 90 degrees Fahrenheit or so, which is kind of like normal body temperature. Um, so with a lot of snakes, that's an important part of attracting them to their prey because snakes do sense heat, not just smell. Um, so this will probably take about 10 or 15 minutes um, and we'll check back when they're done. So this is my ball python nuggets enclosure. I'm just gonna take these weights off here and see what he's up to. He doesn't usually have a really strong striking response to food. It looks like he's in this hide here. Um, so usually I actually just set the prey item in and I just make sure that he's interested in it and then I'll leave him to it. So that's him all curled up. He is a pastel ball python, so that's why he has that really pretty yellow coloration. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna grab the rat and stick it in for him. Okay, so I've got my rat. It's nice and squishy. I've also got my tongs here. Very important that you do use these. Uh, you don't want your snake to um, mistake your hand for a mouse as you're putting it in the enclosure. And you also want to get as little of your own scent on the rat just so that your snake doesn't start associating the smell of you with the smell of food. That's you could also get some uh, accidental feeding response bites. Um, so the best way to feed uh, your snake is to hold the rodent by the body so you have a nice secure grip using the tongs and then make sure that you put the head toward the head of your snake. And this is just because the way snakes eat is actually head first. If they go from the bottom, then actually the prey's back legs, like they can't get it inside their mouth. Um, so if they start on their first try with the head first, that's usually best. Um, so like I said, I'm just gonna set this in Nugget's cage and see if he shows a little bit of interest, which you can't see, but he is, he's sniffing around. So I'm just gonna leave that rat there. This is a perfectly fine way. Oh, he just took it, did you see that? Let's see if I can get footage of that. I don't know if you can see him constricting it there. 
That's good. He must have been hungry. He doesn't always do it that take it that fast. Um, this is actually, I don't know if you can tell the size wise, but the, it's kind of a small prey item for him. Um, I'm going to be upgrading him to weaned rats um, just as soon as I run out of these pups. Um, but he's, he's okay for now. Um, but yeah, so if you do need to leave your prey item in the cage, that's also perfectly fine. Um, just make sure that, you know, you're checking on it and you don't want it to be in there for like more than an hour or so. Um, not all snakes have the same kind of feeding response, so some of them just prefer to be left alone. And that's fine, just uh, make sure you're not leaving it in there forever and ever, obviously. All right, so now we're going to move on to Tux, and he's always a hungry boy, but I actually haven't seen him for a few days. So I think that he is actually probably starting to shed. Um, so I'm just going to open this up and see what we can see here. Uh... Yeah, he actually might even be in blue. Um, so that's another thing you'll often hear is that people do recommend, <laughs> just having a drink, people do recommend that you don't actually feed your snakes while they are in shed. Um, and you know, if, if you have a snake that doesn't like to eat while they're in shed, then obviously don't feed them while they're shedding um, because you know, snakes, they just can't see as well when they're shedding. So sometimes they, they prefer not to take a meal. Um, however, Tux will always eat. <laughs> so if your snake doesn't have a problem eating while it's shedding, there's no reason not to feed him while he's shedding. So I'm gonna stop filming this um, rock and get to the feeding. So Tux is a snake who I know will do a strike feeding if I get his attention. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like because that's obviously another way that you can feed your snake. So I got his attention before, but I'm just gonna try to lure him out of his hide with some movement again. Um, I might actually need to lift his hide up at the same time. Let's see how ambidextrous I am. Oh yeah, he's interested. Okay, so he's gonna come out of his hide in just a second. His head was poking out there. There he is. He's trying to take it back into the hide, but he can't. Actually, I might remove the hide and see if I can get footage of him actually swallowing it, because that would be pretty cool. Dude, what are you even doing? <laughs> like, why is your butt all the way up there? He's like kind of confused <laughs> about what he's doing. He's trying to swallow the rat from the side, which is obviously not gonna work, buddy. So, good luck. <laughs> like, what are you even doing? So you can actually kind of see now that he's coming away from the shadows that his eyes are quite blue. So his vision right now is extremely poor. Um, which might also be why he's having trouble figuring out what side of the rat to try to swallow. He might be figuring out now, looks like he's unlatching. Oh, he had like the rat's whole leg in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't your food, it was just the leg. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come at me. Dude, your food is right there. Honestly, I don't know if you've ever had such a terrible time at eating. Okay, I might intervene and give him give him some help. Sorry if this bad camera, I'm just gonna focus on him now instead of <laughs> the camera because he is coming at me a tiny bit. <laughs> just get off your, get off the rat and I will give it to you. There you go. That's a better angle. <laughs> I think I cut that off with the lid again, so. Once again, you didn't really get to see that, but I will show you him constricting, which is kind of cool. It looks even better when he's recently shed, so he's got like all his shiny scales. And here, I'm gonna actually maybe put this light directly on him. Okay, I'm just gonna see if I can move this part of his tail for you. <laughs> He's back to being exercised. <laughs> oh dear. There we go. That's a bit of a better view.
definitely couldn't manipulate like any old snake like this while they were eating. Um, he's just like extremely food motivated. Um, so this is not, obviously as you can see, he's still going at it. So he's not stopping or regurgitating or anything. He's just like totally focused on his food. And that's kind of a king snake trait. I wouldn't do this with Nugget at all. I leave him alone to eat because he has a ball python and they can be a little bit more picky about what's going on while they're eating and what they're eating and just everything. Ooh, look at his tail. That's cool. So you can see that he is looking a little bit gray in this lighting right now as well. Um, that is because he's about to go into shed. Usually he's a really like beautiful shiny black color. Oh, that's a great view. Thanks, buddy. So like, look at how much his jaw has expanded there. Like, that's crazy. Snakes are just so, so cool. And honestly, even like a rat pup, like he could, he could take something bigger for sure. A rat pup is not like his maximum capacity by any means. Um, but I do feed him on a weekly basis and he is an adult snake. So I'd rather feed him every seven days, something a little bit smaller than go larger. Um, just because king snakes do have a very fast metabolism, so they want to eat something uh, pretty, pretty frequently. Um, so given that schedule, it's better to feed them um, slightly smaller prey more often, so they're not always going crazy looking for food. Versus a larger prey item um, more infrequently, because their metabolism is still going to process that larger prey item pretty quickly. And if you feed really large prey quite frequently, then you end up with an obese snake, which nobody wants. It's like a lot, a lot of work for snakes to, to eat. Like, that's a huge workout to basically just use your muscles in your neck to progressively push the prey all the way down your throat and then all the way down into the stomach area, which is down here. So that's definitely a lot of energy to expend. Before this, I was feeding him adult mice, which is also maybe why he's taking a little bit slower because um, rat pups and adult mice are about the same size, but rat pups, they, they're just like a little bit, they're a little bit more bulky than mice, um, so the mouse is like a bit thinner, so it's easier to get down, which might also be why he's going a bit slower this time. Um, but if you can switch your snake over to rats, that is generally better because rats have more muscle than fat as compared to mice. Um, and muscle has more protein, so it's generally healthier to give a rat. You're getting, you're giving your snake a leaner meal with more energy, as opposed to a mouse, which has higher fat content, so less energy, more fatty tissues. So it looks like he's almost got it down. I'm trying to get a view that doesn't have this crazy shadow in. That's what you get for recording in the evening. Maybe I'll just move him out of the way a tiny bit. My favorite part is when he finally gets it all in and it's like just the tail sticking out. Like for some reason that's extremely satisfying. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, oh, you finally did it and you got it all past sort of the jaw area. Um, so even when you do see the snake fully swallow, uh, you know, there's still a lot of effort left to go to push that all the way down the throat and into the stomach cavity. Um, and then of course even more work required to break that food down and start digesting it. So you're going to want to leave your snake alone for 24 to 48 hours after feeding. Um, honestly, to be on the safe side, with most snakes, you're going to want to leave them for a full 48 hours. Um, and that's just to prevent regurgitation. Um, if handling does stress a snake out, um, and especially if they've got a pretty visible lump from the food and you're kind of manipulating them and 
and pressing on that and stuff, it could stress them out enough that they regurgitate their food um, and that's so they can basically like shed that like extra baggage basically to make a quick getaway kind of thing. Um, so uh, this is, it's pretty bad for the snake to regurgitate, it's pretty damaging to their organs and their throat and stuff like that, so you want to avoid it at all costs. Um, but, you know, not all snakes will stress from handling enough that they'll regurgitate food. And some snakes, even if they are stressed from handling, like, they just <laughs> won't regurgitate food. Um, and so Tux kind of falls into this category, actually. Um, so he would be fine probably for 24 hours after feeding. Um, but other snakes that are a little bit more sensitive to that kind of thing, you definitely want to wait at least 48 hours. Um, and if it's a new snake and you don't really know your snake super well, definitely wait 48 hours. Um, until you're absolutely sure that you understand your snake and their personality. So this is the part that I find really satisfying. See, <laughs> the whole rod is now in his throat and it's just the tail that uh, that's disappearing into his mouth. Nom noms, goodbye. The last little bit. Ah, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna pull out now because um, he could totally start looking for more food now. Um, Really uh, high food response animals will often look for a second meal right after they finish their first meal. So you can tell by kind of how tense his body is and how he's flicking his tongue and stuff that he actually is really on alert right now. We just adjusted his jaw there. Um, so if I were to stick my hand in right now, um, he would for sure go for it. Um, so I'm going to see if I can replace his hide without him doing that. <laughs> Um, this is also a method to if, um, hold on, I'm going to start focusing on doing this for a second. Uh, no, don't eat me. Uh, sorry, buddy. He's fine. He can handle it. It's not that heavy. Um, yeah, so if you only have like smaller prey items on hand, that is something that you can do if, uh, if you want to give your snake a little bit more food, um, you can actually feed them twice in a row um, within the, you know, maybe 10, even 20 minutes of uh, taking their first prey item. Usually snakes are still in feeding mode and it's totally possible that they'll take a second meal, um, especially a really hungry species like a king snake. So that was Tux. He's going to enjoy that meal and he's going to poop it out probably inside of his shed. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye now.